What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi Shrinks and Sneakers.com. I'm gonna try to answer a really difficult question in psychiatry, but one that many people come to me and ask about. And that is, how do we select an SSRI or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor? How do we choose between all these different antidepressants? Now there's six in total, and I'm going to go over each one kind of individually and why that might be a good choice for a specific case. But before I go into why each one is good individually, I'm just gonna start by saying a few things about all the data that we gathered over the last decade on these medications. So what really sets these six SSRIs apart? What I wanna start with is just a little bit of the evidence about do we know whether or not these medications work? Because that's another question many people come to me with. They say, well, well how do we know these SSRIs actually even help with depression? You know, many people will probably tell you they don't help with depression. But let's just go over what we learned, like I said, in the last decade and what we can say definitively about these medications. So there is certainly enough independent meta-analyses that we can draw a few basic conclusions. If you actually look through the literature, there's as many as 200 randomized head-to-head -head trials. So we actually have a lot of good information on which ones work and all that sort of thing. So let's go through some of the basics here. The first point I wanna make is that in depression, the SSRIs work as well as borioxetine, which is a new medication, and the tricyclic antidepressants, which are the older medications for depression. So SSRIs have similar efficacy or effectiveness, if you're talking real world studies, to tricyclics and borioxetine, which is a newer medication with a novel mechanism. When you compare SSRIs, to SNRIs, so the norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, and mirtazapine, what we find is actually mirtazapine and the norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors are a little bit better. So they are a little more effective than SSRIs. And oftentimes that's why people jump to SNRIs or mirtazapine as a second line option after somebody has failed an SSRI. The second point I wanna make here is that SSRIs work as well as bupropion. So some people might think that because you're using norepinephrine and dopamine with bupropion, you're actually getting more efficacy. That is not true. SSRIs hold up equally well in terms of depression for, to bupropion. So for treatment of depression, it's as good as bupropion. And that's even with anxious features present. Now when you talk about the third point here, in generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, panic disorder, the comparisons are fewer, so there's less data to support this, but SSRIs in the trials and the data we do have indicate that they work just as well uh, for anxiety disorders as other medications. So with the exception of one specific disorder and one specific medication. And if you look at the, that specific disorder and medication, we're talking about social anxiety disorder and if you look at the data from the randomized controlled trials, what you find is that the medication phenylzine, which is a MAOI, a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, is actually significantly more effective than SSRIs for social anxiety disorder. So th that is your number one choice if you're dealing with social anxiety disorder. And the final point I wanna make before getting into choosing which SSRI you're going to use, I'm going to say that SSRIs work as well as clomipramine in OCD. So if we're talking about OCD, there was this, there was this early data that kind of indicated that tricyclic antidepressant clomipramine was much better than SSRIs at treating OCD. That is simply not true. SSRIs hold up equally well to that medication as well. And for the most part, the final couple of points I'll make is that the SSRIs are better tolerated with, than most medications, with the exception of the vortioxetine that we talked about and bupropion. So those two medications are tolerated a little bit better than SSRIs. Now, the reason being is because those two help with cognitive function, and cognitive deficits and depression can sometimes be very difficult to treat. The second point about bupropion and vortioxetine is that they are both, um, they both do not cause sexual side effects, which is a big deal for a lot of patients. So no sexual side effects, better cognitive functioning, sounds like a win to me. The last things I'll say is that for the most part, none of these SSRIs of the six that we're gonna be talking about 
really stands out that much more in terms of efficacy over uh, e each other. There's no specific one that we're going to say is a definitive win because it's just simply that much more effective. What we are going to do is we're going to say what kind of a patient or what kind of a presentation would each one of these medications make sense for. And that's what's going to help us to understand a little bit more about how we make those selections and why we make those selections and why when you go to see your psychiatrist you wonder why, why are they choosing Lexapro over sertraline or why are they choosing fluoxetine over fluvoxamine, right? There's many different reasons and we're going to cover that in the subsequent videos. For now, I'm going to cut it there. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and please like and subscribe to the channel so we can keep doing this for you guys.